welcome to Program Pride. I'm Todd James. And I'm Spinster Girl. I just love that intro. Yeah, isn't it's it so great? rocking and I'm grooving. So happy you have it. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. a good thing we were moving so much we knocked the other chair away <laughs> just, befo just before the, the camera came on. Yeah, but luckily Todd's volunteered to cut off his knees. <laughs> we appreciate it. We've got a great show. Let's get we this do. started. We've got, um, we've got uh, Kelly Dunfield from Identity here. And we've got, oh, um, a piece on the Alberta Summit that's coming yeah. up. And who are you talking to? Uh, I'll be talking to Jeffrey Shore from the Gay and Lesbian Community Center of Edmonton. So we got in the yeah. second half. Excellent, excellent stuff. Now, oh, we also have a new segment on our show today. Yeah, we don't have we? a new family member. Uh, and boy, are we proud, proud of our little Dan. Dan. Dishing Dan. with yeah. Dan. So that will be a lot of fun. all the deeds. Now, I have to mention something that. I think is terribly important to our community. Now, I just found out from a very reliable source, The Star, that dinosaurs died out after going gay. No lie, right? No lie. A top geneticist claims that he has solved the mystery of why, uh, why dinosaurs became distinct. Radiation from the sun turned them gay. Uh, a Texas geneticist. I know. That's why in California and San Francisco, all those people who suntan, that's why there are so many there, queers yeah, there. It, it yeah. has to be that. Well, apparently, outer space radiation altered the rambling beast's genetic code, so they lost interest in mating with the opposite sex. In short, they became homosexuals. So there you go. I think mm. that's, uh, that's I, I, I think, enlightening. I think well, you're doing the interview that's coming up next. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go look to see if I can find a Queeranosaurus Rex. <laughs> I'll sure, see you later. I'm sure there's got to be one around here somewhere. Have fun. Thanks. Well, I guess since I'm all alone here, I'm going to talk to Kelly Dunfield from uh, I Identity, which is, um, I have it right here, Peer and Support Group out of Calgary. Is that the proper name? Well, I guess it's Identity, a peer support group for a lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth, okay. and their friends. Well, welcome, Kelly. Nice to have you here. Thanks, Merritt. Now, not only just being here, you are also a volunteer on the program at times. Yes, But today, true. we've got you in front of the camera to talk yep. about this. Tell, tell me a little bit about Identity. Well, um, I guess it was set up uh, last February, so almost a year ago. It's been um, in the works. and. Uh, there was a real need in Calgary to create um, a space, a safe place for uh, youth to meet. Um, it, gay, lesbian, bisexual youth represent the highest um, number of homeless youth, um, youth that attempt and commit suicide, also drug and alcohol addiction. And um, because of those numbers, we figured that um, something needed to be done to help combat that. And um, by setting up a peer support group, we figured, hey, that's going to solve half the problem. These kids are going to have somewhere to go, and um, they're going to be able to meet other people like themselves, and that will help with self-esteem issues and give them a sense of community as well. You know, I understand from our talking that a lot of the, the group is also about um, getting them involved within the group so that they are supporting each other. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, um, before every meeting, there's usually about, you know, half an hour of uh, sort of a social time. People get to know each other, and at the beginning of each meeting, you know, we go around the group and everyone kind of, you know, tells their name if they want and, you know, their favorite band, their favorite food, their favorite place to go. Um, and we definitely encourage people to get to know each other, to be friends. Um, the meetings that um, Identity has are not, um, you know, just sitting around and, you know, listening to someone talk. They're very interactive. Like we've had game nights, roller skating nights, a Halloween dance, right. you know. Different so fun so things as well. it's not only um, informational, but it's, it's social as well. It's definitely, because yeah. that's really important. I mean, you go to school all day, or you go to work all day, and you don't want to come out for a fun evening and sit around while someone talks at you. Um, it's really important to not be talked at. It's important to interact and, um, you know, feel that you're able to do that and that you're able to speak about what's on your mind. And I'm sure that that also aids to, to break down the, the feeling of isolation that a lot of you... Oh. Um, Definitely. Lesbian and gay youth must feel. Yeah, it's, it's been amazing. Like, I really noticed um, a change. I remember some of the people who uh, came to the first few meetings, um, and then to look at them now, it's just amazing, the mm -hmm. changes. It's really, it's really inspiring. And, um, you know, and I guess from that, you know, if it's, if it's even just two or three people who go through that change, it makes it all worth it, you mm -hmm. know, to know that, you know, the group has had a positive influence on their lives. 
So how do, what age range are you, are you giving this for? Um, basically zero to 25. Yeah. Um, we, we wanted it to be, we didn't want to put a lower age limit on just because um, we feel that if anyone, no matter what their age, is questioning their sexuality, that they can come. Um, and we're gearing it more towards people who are younger than 18, who have no other social outlet. I mean, once you hit 18, you can go to the bars if you want, mm -hmm. and you can kind of get into the uh, queer social scene that way. But if you're younger than that, it's really difficult. So that's why we cut it off at 25. And it must build a really nice uh, feeling of support within the community so that your first initiation into the, the gay community is not through a bar. Exactly. Well, that's another important thing too, right? I mean, lots of people choose to go to the bar, and that's fine. But there's a lot of people out there who don't like going to the bar. And if you don't like going to the bar, then where do you meet people, you know? Um, especially if you're feeling insecure about your sexuality, you're certainly not going to go out and volunteer with maybe, you know, AIDS awareness or um, lesbian mother support group or something like that. You need to get your own issues straight, and that's what identity's there for. Um, a lot of people um, in the group have built lasting friendships, you know, from coming there, you know, they've come to the first meeting by themselves or with one of their straight friends from school, and then now you see them out, you know, wherever they are with people that they've met through the group. So it's great to see that those friendships are being built yeah. and lasting. Wow. And very important friendships, I'm sure. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you mentioned is that quite often um, if there is, is uh, a crisis or a tension, that yeah. there will be phone calls within the network of, of people who, who are part of identity so that it's not just one person handling all the yep. concerns. Yeah. Initially, um, for first contact, there's one contact number. And um, the person um, who, you know, either gets the number from whether it be gay lines or an ad in the paper or whatever would call. And that initial contact um, is often have to, has to do with reassuring the person um, about their decision or their questions that they have and to meet them at the meeting um, and introduce them to people so that they don't feel that they're walking in there with 30 eyes staring at them, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, no one wants to feel that way. Afterwards, um, we definitely encourage people to interact and all that sort of stuff, but you mean we have a policy of not giving out phone numbers. If you say, you know, these two people want to exchange phone numbers, great, but don't come asking someone else for someone's phone right. number. We respect, you know, people's privacy with regards to that too. That's probably it sounds like a very safe place to be. Yeah, I, I think so. We've had some really positive feedback. Um, there were I wasn't involved at all um, with the other youth group that had been in Calgary previously, but um, some people who started coming to Identity had been involved with it and they said that they really liked it. It felt a lot safer to them and they also liked the structure of the meetings. The fact that it, even though it was a loose structure, there was still something planned every night so that they didn't feel like they were just sitting around and kind of do, you know, searching right. for things to do. Well, what sort of events have you? I know in the past you had, um, recently had a show at, you, uh, no, Boys Town? Yeah, we had it at Boys Town, actually. Um, yeah, I guess uh, sometime in the summer we had a um, couple of people from the, I guess it would be, gosh, I can't remember, the Chinook Arch, is it there? I can't think of the, Sovereign Court, the court, and uh, we had a man and a woman drag queen, king sort of thing, come in and talk to the whole group about what it means to be a drag king, drag queen, talking about cross dressing, different things like that, talking about makeup, you know, talking about trying to look as mannish as you can and different things like that. And it really inspired everyone uh -huh. in the group. Like everyone was like really excited about it. And I think with, you know, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert and all that stuff, people have really been kind of turned on to drag. So um, yeah, we raised about $300. And everyone who performed was under 25. It was the first time they'd ever done drag. And it was phenomenal. Like, wow. I was just totally amazed. It was scary, but everyone did a wonderful okay. job. Now, you've had also some more serious topics covered in, in your events as yeah. well. Yeah. One of the major things that um, I think is important, and we do do every three months, is safe sex. Um, a woman from the STD clinic in Calgary comes in and does a wonderful job. And there's lots of questions being asked, so I do I do think that that's something that is missed in the high schools, especially with regards to homosexuality and safe sex. You may oh, get straight absolutely. safe sex, but you certainly don't get the other. And she's been great, and yeah, everyone finds that really helpful. We've also had talks um, with Bill Rutherford from P Flag, and um, 
lots of other stuff. Mm -hmm. Kelly, it sounds like an amazing group, and uh, we're going to show the numbers. I think we've already shown them, um, just so people can get in touch with you and, and the group, and, and wonderful work, and more power to you, and good luck in the future with Identity. Great. Thanks, Thanks a Kelly. lot. Well, and now that I have, oh, there we are. No, there we are. Now that I have the place to myself, I am going to take you to, uh, to talk to one of the coordinators of the Alberta Summit, which is happening in April. We're here with Corey Johnstone, who is the conference chair of the Alberta Summit, held in Red Deer College, April 26th, 27th, and 28th. Now, for those who don't know, what is the summit? Okay, summit is for the gay, lesbian, and bisexual community across Alberta. It's for people to, um, to participate in our trade fair workshops, and also it's more of a social atmosphere for everyone that belongs to the gay, lesbian, and bisexual community across Alberta. Great, so it's not just for Red Deerites, if no. that's a term, no. it's for everyone across yep. Alberta. Correct. Which is a very exciting gathering. So uh, you expect about how many people? We're expecting about between 150 and 200 people, hopefully a few more. Um, the previous conferences have had attendance uh, running up to about 200 people wow. throughout the whole weekend. Great. Now you've got activities planned every night. Uh, Friday night in particular is a very exciting night, I think, for everyone involved. Uh, you've got someone very special coming now. Who might that be? So Ben Robinson. Woo -woo. He is going to be opening up our conference on Friday night around 8 o'clock. He is going to speak for about an hour, hour and a half. And then after that, we're going to have a wine and cheese for the community to maybe ask some questions um, to Ben Robinson and just for them to get to meet him. Great. Well, I know he's a hero to a lot of people, so yes. that would be a great opportunity. Yes. And then Saturday comes along and... Yes, we're having a trade fair and workshops. Um, the trade fair is for the gay and lesbian bisexual um, business, business people across Alberta to participate in our trade fair um, to exchange different ideas um, to sell the merchandise if they wish to. Uh, we're having a f about eight workshops as well uh, running for about an hour, hour and a half that specialize in certain areas that we think is important for the community to, um, to pay more attention to. Um, for example, um, violence in our gay community. That isn't something that people really think about or really even consider, and we wanted to, uh, to approach that, um, that area and make people realize that there is problems um, in our relationships in the gay community and maybe have some discussion groups on how we can maybe overcome that sort of violence. Another uh, workshop that you're planning is a gay and lesbian media panel, which I think is very interesting to all of us. Yes, we are aiming to have, combining our resources throughout Alberta, to have a gay media association um, that's designated to maybe uh, participate in all the gay activities throughout Alberta uh, with the gay and lesbian bisexual community. And we're trying to maybe have more of a positive view of our lifestyle uh, by having a gay media association. Right, so um, a less biased um, exactly. representation. Good, good. And Saturday night there's a dance, is that correct? A social dance, yeah, we're having a DJ. And a dance will probably be between 9 and 2 o'clock. And hopefully we'll have some snack food around midnight 
and just for all the people in the community to have a good time, uh, have a few drinks, and meet some new people. And Sunday comes along and you get to have... The brunch. Right. We're having a brunch, hopefully, and then we're also going to be having um, some sort of uh, organization that's going to be performing at the brunch as well. Uh, hopefully maybe one of the choir groups in Alberta. Now, throughout all of these events, there will be times and places set aside for people just to get together and talk. Exactly. Um, the Wine and Cheese on Friday night is one good example for people to integrate uh, with their other peers, uh, with Savannah Robinson. Um, Saturday is going to be a very busy day for everyone with the trade fair and the workshops. Um, Saturday evening with the dance, people integrate, um, meet new people, share different ideas. And then Sunday, what we're going to have is, it's a, most of the day is going to be left open for people just to hang around and just talk and discuss the issues that were brought up during our workshops. So really, it's a great opportunity for people to come up together throughout Alberta to find out what resources there are in the gay and lesbian community. Exactly. It's for all types of groups in our community. Now, I just wanted to touch quickly on the cost. You said there's a nominal fee, but it's just there to cover your your costs basically just to cover expenses we're not a profit organization we're just here to cover expenses and show people um, and show them how to have a good time over the weekend and so once again it's the Alberta Summit at Red Deer College April 26th through 28th and should people pre-register if they can we're gonna have some pamphlets and set out in all the locations throughout Alberta and they can um, send in their applications great well thanks a lot and good luck hey thank you Hi, and welcome back. Well, now that Spencer Girl has left us for a little while, it gives me a chance to uh, have some air time this week, maybe. Um, I'd like to welcome to Program Pride Jeffrey Shore, who is the male co-chair and treasurer of the Gay and Lesbian Community Center of Edmonton. Or, or, or Glicky, I guess is it. Welcome yes. to it. Thank you for inviting us. Not a problem. Jeff, I'm wondering, first of all, if you could tell our listeners a little bit about um, the history of, of Glicky, it's, it's been around in this inception for about five years, is that right? Um, the latest incarnation as the Gay and Lesbian Community Center of Edmonton since 1987. Mm -hmm. um, previously we were the Gay Alliance Towards Equality. GATE. GATE, yes. Mm -hmm. We started in 1971, which makes us one of the oldest um, so service organizations in North America for gays, lesbians and bisexuals. Mm -hmm. And um, what are some of the things that you do? I, I know that you have a, a fabulous library of periodicals and books and things, but what other things, uh, other services do you provide? Well, we have an evening drop-in, and uh, if we have additional volunteers, we would have an afternoon drop-in as well. We've had to cut back since we've moved. Okay. It and opens so a lot of questions, but you're open. we also have open Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. 7 to 10 p.m. Oh. And that's prime and time. That's prime time. Okay. Um, we also have a youth segment which is open on Saturday evenings between 8 and 10. Mm -hmm. We also offer confidential peer support counseling either by telephone or in person. Okay. Um, we also have a meeting space for people to come in and use our facility for 
meetings. Okay, uh, stop it right there. Because I know recently uh, Glicky or the Gay and Lesbian Community Center of Edmonton <gasps> has That's a recent, lot to say. Uh, yes. Yeah, it is. It has recently moved from it, its location that it was at for a, a number of years on Jasper Avenue, um, just a little bit west to a more central location. Yes, we're now in the Oliver area, which is 101st Street, mm -hmm. sorry, 101st Avenue and 124th Street, um, right underneath the Boys Town Cafe restaurant. Okay, great. Um, we still have people that remember us that we were, when we were back on 104th mm -hmm. Street um, in uh, the same building as Weight Watchers, but <laughs> hopefully, and, and they're, hopefully they're finding us. With an organization that's been around since 71, uh, there's certainly a lot of history there, too. Um, yes, and, and many actually, many organizations that have have come out of Glicky. We actually were quite surprised to find that out. Um, we started an archives project last year to sort of document the history of the gay, lesbian, and bisexual community of Edmonton, and uh, they discovered that we actually did go back that far, and that we were the, one of the oldest. That probably predates some of your active members now, even. I mean. Yeah. Yes, we had to track some of them down as far away as uh, Vancouver, Calgary. Um, we also had a team that went east to uh, Regina and Winnipeg to locate some documents and um, to recreate the history through oral, oral presentations that have been preserved. I, I'd like to focus for a few minutes, perhaps, about um, Glicky's move, because you're in, in a larger location now you're um, in a, a situation where you really are a community center. There are more and more groups that are now meeting, they're using the space, they're using the facility. And, and from, from the reports I hear, there's this real community spirit that came, came together to help Definitely. to create that space. Well, we, the, we went to inspect the space back in August, <laughs> and it was previously a nightclub that folded and they just demolished the place before they left. It was mm. just a, a, a major mess to clean up. Um, the people from the Illusion Social Club were and one of the, the first the trans transvestite, okay. tran transgendered Gender. community, came to our assistance immediately and said, what can we do? And they started that putting up see. walls and installing electrical equipment and, and getting us on our feet so that we were able to open beginning of October. Now, when, when they did this, were they in, I mean, I'm thinking transgendered, uh, trans. Oh, definitely. Were they in drag? They were in, in, in full hair and, and nails, and, and that's where they're So there was a lot of hammer and nails happening, is what you're telling that's us. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we also had a lot of assistance from the PFLAG, Parents, mm -hmm. Friends, and Family of Lesbian and Gay, who also use our center on a regular basis mm -hmm. for their meetings. Um, so we're happy to have them there. Great. Um, as well as a number of other community members that just pitched in and helped. Now, um, about membership, approximately how many active members does Glicky have at the present time? We have about 70 active members, and we're always soliciting for additional memberships, mm -hmm. um, just so that and we And they're became, cheap, right? They're very cheap. It's okay. $25 a year, or $40 a couple. Um, it entitles you to vote, of course, mm -hmm. to have library privileges. You get the newsletter. You get the newsletter. And you support your community organization. You support the community and make sure that it's mm -hmm. there for you when you need it. Yeah, uh, th that's something that's really interesting too. I, I would imagine a lot of people when they're in the early stages of coming out or, or going through perhaps some crisis in their life, I really utilize the Gay and Lesbian Community Center um, as well as academics. I, I know you have a speakers bureau. Yes. You do a number of talks at high schools and, and universities and things like that to educate people about issues around sexual orientation and things like that as well. Well, that's very interesting because we... <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Mm. Um, y your library, too. Our library, yes. We have over a thousand volumes of both fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, academics come in and use it for research purposes. Mm -hmm. and. Um, about people coming into the community just using us as a coming out mm -hmm. facility. That's not true. We, we actually counsel people that are in all stages oh. of crises, okay. um, from um, spousal battering to 
breaking up with a partner? Actually, there was a, a few shows ago we did a, a segment on uh, the women's project that you had dealing with uh, violence and lesbian relationships. And that yes. was something else that came out of Clicky. Yes, that was a project that we worked on with the Women's Exchange Project. There were two ladies up from Trinidad, as your viewers mm -hmm. may remember. And uh, that's one of the focuses that we do want to maintain, is that we want to be an instrument for social change. Great. Um, we're, we're just about out of time here. Um, what would you like to leave our, our viewers with? Um, maybe to get involved with a community center. Uh, Pride Week is coming up, I know, which is yes. a humongous event that, that you it's, put on each year. It's a marvelous event that uh, we do need a lot of volunteer commitment from people to organize. It just doesn't happen. And, uh, and, and when will Pride Week be this year? It's in June, isn't it's it? It's the third week of June, the 14th to the 22nd, wrapping right. up with an EVM concert, which are always fabulous. They are. They're wonderful. Well, we're just about out of time. I'd like to thank you so much once again for coming and um, the numbers on the screen right now. And next is a brand new segment that we have. Um, it's called um, Dishing with Dan. And over to you, Dan. Hello, and welcome to Dishing with Dan. And thank you very much, Todd, for introducing me, even though you almost forgot my name. Uh, this is a brief view on the current events happening in Alberta. To start off, we'll do the Queer Act Queer Conference coming to you from Edmonton. That's from March 22nd to the 23rd. You can call John for further information on that. And also coming up is the 14th annual Western Cup Tournament. It's put on by Apollo Friends and Sport. It's from April 5th to April 7th, but here's the deadline. It's March 29th, so get your team entered there. Call Matthew, the fees vary. Um, the expression art show, the expressions is putting on an art show. It's called Art is a Universal Language. It's coming to you from Calgary, March 30th. You can call Brian for further information on that. And the Alberta Summit's coming up. Watch for that. It's in Red Deer, April 26th to 28th. And watch for the Care to Dance coming up from Can Society, Red Deer, March 25th. Now I'll turn it over to them. All right, and we're just going to wrap up uh, for April's show. We're going to be on the road, aren't we? Yeah. Pretty exciting. We're going to talk to, uh, who are you talking I'm to? I'm talking to the Red Deer and District Museum about a um, gay and lesbian exhibit that they're planning. And a very exciting exhibit. And we're going to be cooking. That's going to be fun. And uh, the Care to, a Red Deer AIDS Network, uh, we're going to talk to them about the Care to Dance fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're going to just have a fun time. Oh, we're also going to, oh my God, talk to Dan again. Yeah, Dan will be here. <laughs> and, so uh, take care. Yeah, and I think I'm ready for my close-up now.